Welcome to PhotoFinds. I am your host Kevin Yee and this week we're going to get started in Disney's Animal Kingdom where there's a little bit of minor construction just outside that front gate. Something having to do with the telephones maybe or the lockers. Uh, now we're looking at Expedition Everest where as you can see a number of the branches have been thinned out on these bamboo uh, to make it more visible to see into the ride. Uh, there's been a, thi a thinning out of a lot of the foliage at Animal Kingdom lately anyway. Haven't run across this in quite some time, not even sure if I've seen this exact uh, performance. It's just the street atmosphere, street uh, performances in Discovery Island at Animal Kingdom. Guy on stilts, as you can see here, moving around and um, dancing sort of with the, uh, the rest of the characters. And they turn it into a bit of a flash mob, getting everyone else involved as well. We're looking now at Kilimanjaro Safari. This is that uh, finale scene with the, uh, the zebras still to come. And looking forward a little bit, we'll see this fence again in a second, but here's um, the fence they've built in the back to mark uh, sort of the back zone for the zebras. And our, um, our truck goes through that fence right there. Uh, before that, we have to go around this curve here, and there's a closer up look at that same fence. And then one more look as we pass by the fence. Now I took a couple of shots as I walked out the door. Um, this is uh, a little unusual for me to see Animal Kingdom this very empty uh, and it's still daylight in fact. Uh, the park is now closing at uh, 5 and 6 o'clock on various days and so you can get some hours of daylight in there as you're leaving the park. Now this caught my eye on the way out. Uh, these colorful benches here on the left were once home to uh, the uh, temporary tattoo artist, that cart there. And so that seems to be gone at least for the moment. Uh, another shot out towards Camp Mini Mickey, and then we're back out toward the uh, Discovery Island front zone, and then finally to the Oasis itself. And I shot there, then it captured, that captures what the Oasis is all about. A little bit of, of the wildlife, but mostly about the, uh, the plants, as you can see up at the top here. Okay, uh, And then uh, Rainforest Cafe, I don't recall the sign always being here. Uh, wild place to shop and eat. They've uh, got these A-frames up these days to try to encourage people to go to the Rainforest Cafe. They can't be that busy. It's got to be one of the world's least busy rainforest cafes. So we're switching to Epcot now, and just as we saw in the Magic Kingdom not too long ago, there's a strip of land right behind the main entrance that has been kind of converted. And this strip of land, as you can see here, uh, has been torn up, and they've got um, some temporary covering over the top of it, and it goes all the way around. Uh, this obviously has something to do with Fast Pass Plus uh, and the RFID initiative. So in this case, the RFID turnstiles um, that let you into the park, which they tested previously at Epcot, probably coming back soon. Now, speaking of RFID and FastPass Plus, here are the FastPass Plus um, pylons out in front of Spaceship Earth. And you'll see um, that it's uh, visible on the other, the other entrance to Spaceship Earth as well. Um, really, so there's a merge point right behind that. Uh, so there's going to be two lines in Spaceship Earth like there are uh, at any FastPass attraction. Smarter Planet, this is the runtime attraction in Innoventions West. Uh, it is now behind walls and it will be coming back at, as uh, some other Smarter Planet, some other IBM product, but it won't be runtime exactly. This is also around the corner from there, Piggy Bank Adventures to our right as we're looking at this. Uh, these were benches most recently, before that they were the Rock and Robots exhibit. Don't know what's going in there. We saw Bell testing um, uh, out in the uh, Future World area here. This is on a, on a Sunday when the Storytime with Bell or Enchanted Storytime with Bell is not operating in the Magic Kingdom, uh, which has been in test lately, so this is presumably a training opportunity for this Bell. Switching parks to Disney's Hollywood Studios. This scrim was so good, I was past it before I recognized there was anything even amiss on the building. And um, on our way over to Disney Animation, uh, the building, uh, to look at what's new in there, but uh, we get stopped by that gift shop where there are some Haunted Mansion type um, figures now. So there's the Hatbox Ghost. He was $99. Uh, the Hitchhiking Ghost. This is a second version of a, a something like this. This one lights up. The other ones didn't. Uh, there's also the Organist, so I don't really much like his face if you turn it around the other way. And this is a, a bit of a framed poster or lithograph, Tomb Sweet Tomb. Now on our way into the Disney Animation, going in through the shop that is, uh, we pass by some new exhibits, Castles and Cottages, as you can see includes this kind of setup scene, uh, so you can see what depth looks like when they set it up the animation. Uh, and it's covered on both walls in that first room. Jungles and Forests is on one of the walls in the other room, as is Fantasy Scapes, Streets and Alleys. So they're really kind of 
trying to go through the process of animation, what you can see in animation, and how they have to create the animation. I think this is perfect for what this building ought to be doing. Now this is our destination, the production gallery, where as you can see they've changed things around to be now themed to Wreck-It Ralph. I haven't much uh, paid much attention to the previews for Wreck-It Ralph, so I don't really know the characters involved, uh, but I thought I would capture the maquettes. These are the maquettes, right, the little scale models, uh, and the concept art as we can see from uh, a couple of different angles. Now there's a close-up of the little um, stand-up video, coin-operated video game, as you might find it in an arcade from Fix-It Felix. And then a look at a couple other display cases. We'll close in on the one on the left and then the one on the right. And of course the uh, idea behind Wreck-It Ralph the movie will be that our hero can jump between video games and that's what we're seeing here, are these designs for various video games and the characters he will encounter. So there is a Frank and Weenie poster and then Monsters Incorporated and then after that comes the Wreck-It Ralph posters on that one wall. Now just opposite that wall is an office that sometimes gets changed around based on what's new or what's coming and indeed that's what's down here. You see the Fix-It Felix Jr. stand-up operating, um, operating as though it's an actual video game in the corner of the office and then artwork from Wreck-It Ralph uh, kind of scattered around the, the tables for the remainder of the office. Now this caught my eye in the great movie ride. This is looking up and to our left in the mural. Most of the mural looks great, but there are these pockmarked pock gouges, it looks like, um, in the very top of the mural, and I hope they get that fixed. It didn't look great. And I thought I would show you something that's, uh, there's nothing new in this, but it's my favorite hidden Mickey throughout the resorts. Uh, this is in the 1920s gangster scene on your left-hand side. Just a little bit of Mickey's uh, foot and his and his tail so you can tell that it really is Mickey. And we'll end with this shot of Clint Eastwood in The Great Movie Ride. Someone pointed out to me on the internet and I don't mean this to be political but it's uh, in everyone's um, conversations these days that there's an empty chair next to Eastwood here in The Great Movie Ride as well. There's the chair. So that brings us to the end of another week. We thank you for your attention and a brief reminder that since it's Epcot's 30th anniversary, you might want to have a look at the Epcot First 30 Years book that I have put together with uh, Jeff Lang. This is a photo book. It's got 158 pages, more than 500 photos, color photos, uh, arranged to show kind of the history of the park. We paid heavy attention to the things that are no longer available to see at the park today, so it's, it's very history oriented and those of you who remember the park and want to see what it was all about should go ahead and give it a look. Thanks as always, we'll catch you next time.